Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of One on One with the Humble Prince. My name is Olu Faluyi and today I'm joined by the managing partner of the Denda Group and a culture critic whose recent article, Why You Shouldn't Visit South Africa, has gotten quite the traction of multiple media outlets, including Sahara Reporters. Today, please let's welcome Mr. Ernest Danjima. <laughs> Ernest, are you there? I'm right here. Thank you for joining me, man. How's everything? Not bad, not bad. I'm doing well, uh, I, I'm a Nigerian national. I, I hold a Nigerian passport, okay. and so I'm no stranger to, to difficulties in entering, you know, or, or uh, in entering different uh, different countries. We need visas to, uh, you know, get into almost every country in the world, you know, except for a few. Um, so I'm no, you know, I'm not new to, you know, uh, troubles, with visa troubles, and all that stuff. Mm. But uh, my experience uh, applying for a South African visa. And, and going to South Africa has always been particularly interesting, right? Wow. Uh, but most recently, I, I think the impetus behind the article, I mean, what put me over the edge was I was supposed to go there, um, I think the last month or a month and a half ago uh, for, for the mamas, and I had a couple of meetings uh, that I was supposed to have there in South Africa. And I, I had gone to the embassy in, in, in New York to apply for a visa, uh, I told them, hey, I, I have five days before I leave. They were like, oh, it's five business days. Oh, but it's going to take longer. And just the attitude was, wow. you know, was something. And I was like, okay, uh, maybe I'll just do it when I could get to Nigeria. And then I get to Nigeria. At first, it cost twice or three times as much to get the exact same visa in Nigeria as it does in the United States. Wow. Right. Yeah, it cost me, so it was going to cost me $36 to get in the U.S., and it was going to cost me, you know, I mean, if you convert it, you know, you're talking almost $100 in Nigeria. Wow. And just the, the process in Nigeria, you don't even get to interact with any any South Africans. Uh, you know, the, the visa process, the embassy process has always been kind of, it's the first line of contact between citizens of two different countries right is you meet yeah. them and you kind of you you're selling your country to them and and they they've all but taken away even that element from it they don't even have the decency to to put south africans here on ground to interact with nigerians and almost do the job of selling they've outsourced it they've hired nigerians to sell south africa to other nigerians and and that's a trend that we've seen across different platforms and so you know uh, I, I, after seeing that treatment in nigeria yeah. I, I i couldn't keep quiet anymore i mean I, i've taken i've taken it you know uh for for you know almost a decade now but mm. that that just put me over the edge yeah i was gonna say you know i wish i could share your pain i have an american passport so i <laughs> i'm just joking but <laughs> just to, to uh, what lucky, lucky you lucky you <laughs> yeah. and that is part of the problem actually yeah to what you said though are you saying that it's nigerians running the south african embassy in nigeria uh, no the the visa process is not even handled by the south african embassy they are uh, they've outsourced it to a third party agency called the vfs a visa facilitation oh, wow. uh, service or something. Uh, a lot of a lot of foreign countries have done that, where they figured out too many Nigerians applying to come to our country. Hmm. Let's just outsource it to some. I think it's it's owned by an Indian, uh, some Indian gentleman, and you know, so it's it's a third party agency that deals with the administrative process of visas. Hmm. Wow. And so so it's all like yeah, they they all Nigerian hires. You know, wow. yeah, and maybe there's That's a, interesting. even the manager, I mean, I had to speak to a manager and even she was Nigerian. So wow. I didn't, I didn't encounter any South Africans there. Yeah, that's, that that, that's strange. That would be like, um, Americans working in the Nigerian embassy here in the States and not Nigerians because the embassy is supposed to be an extension of the country. Correct. Exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly. You bring your diplomats into the right. country okay. and they get to interact with these people and sell your country to exactly. them. It's an insult that, that a lot of people don't even t take time to actually pause and say hey what's going on here right you know what i mean yeah i know i can relate to um i don't want to bash the nigerian embassy here but i'm sure you've heard some horror stories but let's let's move along but at, um, but at least but at least it's nigerians and and when you get there you 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 are almost welcome you you get to see okay this is what i'm it, it's a precursor to being in nigeria i always tell everybody definitely. once you experience the embassy in in, in new york 
you you know what life is life is gonna be like <laughs> nothing better pre- it's, nothing better prepares you <laughs> nothing better prepares you than going to exactly. the nigerian embassy in new york right. right and they have nigerian food there and everything uh, but let's move along um your article like i said uh quite astute i i, I read it over and over again um you know the, the article talks about xenophobia and discrimination on nigerians by south african people and not necessarily the government which I find kind of bizarre because, um, especially, you know, being the fact that we're all Africans, you know, um, apartheid is <laughs> all but gone. But um, what do you think? What do you think is the reason? Why do you think? What is the reason? What do you think is the reason behind that? So, so I will say this, right? Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people try, the government tries to divorce themselves from, from the xenophobia. But I think they're one and the same thing, right? Because the government sets the, 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 you know the agenda the policy right. of how their citizens should interact with our citizens if the government is telling us through their visa policies and the immigration policies you are not wanted in our country and when we show up there the, of course the citizens it, are going to say hey our government has told us is, you're is, not wanted is that really the yeah, case so though because i thought the that, government that, is that, not that is exactly what's going on really because i thought the is sorry. pursuing policies that are deliberately xenophobic Wow. And targeted to it. Yes, they are. Hmm. And let's call a spade a spade. I mean, we've been dancing around this, you know, thing for a while because, you know, we're all Africans and we're brothers. And, right. You know, we helped bring down the apartheid regime and all that stuff. But in the same way that we stood up to the apartheid regime, we have to stand up to a, a, a wrong headed, you know, uh, almost internal looking uh, regime here that, uh, you know, pursued by, by uh, Jacob Zuma. Right. You know, like I said, what, what's what's scary is, like I said earlier, is the the, discriminica- the discrimination is coming from our own fellow black Africans. <laughs> so, Correct. Uh, I don't uh, understand. So, yes, I, I, d- xenophobia is 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 I, I, I don't want to normalize it, but m- most a lot of people, you know, when they're there's no jobs and there's, you know, there's strife right. in a country. OK, that they're the, that's the easiest thing to turn to. But I think that those those policies can actually if the government sets the agenda like so it, it won't be outrageous for xenophobic crimes to increase in the united states because of a president trump that would not be a stretch because again the government the, the head of the government has set a policy that yeah, policies foreigners are not welcome here of course citizens mm. who feel like you know who already feel you know like they're on the edge and foreigners are to blame for their strife are going to take that as a you know a, 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 oh this this is okay let's let's go ahead and you're already seeing that in several parts of the country right in yeah. the United States so when a government pursues a policy like a South African government is right now this the xenophobic crimes are just a result of that they're not, they're not they're not separated from it so they can they can denounce it all they want and set up commissions and hmm. you know all that stuff but the real problem is in their policies towards nigeria and in fact you know from this article i've gotten messages from rwandans from you know kenyans from uh, people all across the african spectrum people that hold african passports who have had the exact same experience with the wow. south african in south africa or with south african immigration it's, it's sad man i think this needs to change but um moving along um so i actually you know based on your article i spoke to some out Af- some south africans um in yeah. africa i mean in south africa I actually I also spoke to some Nigerians there who also said that and they said that the xenophobia and the discrimination is warranted because of the reputation of Nigerians there. Like, you know, Nigerians right. are into drugs. Nigerians are into um, uh, we're bringing scams, drugs, we're bringing crime, 419, you know, all that rapists, stuff. And yeah, obviously, yeah, we're, you not know. Sending our, we're not sending our best. I, I wonder where we've heard <laughs> that message before. No, but yeah, exactly. But here's the thing, <laughs> right. though. It's amazing because the people I spoke to, especially the yeah. Nigerian people, the Nigerian guy was a doctor. And I said, are you trying to tell me that you don't have fellow doctors in Nigeria? I mean, I mean, in South Africa, fellow Nigerian doctors in South Africa. He said they do. They have professionals, lawyers, bankers and everything. But he's saying the people they're talking to, the Nigerians they're talking about are the kind of Nigerians that have given Nigerian a bad reputation in South Africa. What do you want to say about that? So, so first of all, I think the comparison that I just drew is a very important one to, you know, to make, right? The way that Trump speaks about, you know, Mexicans in the United States mm-hmm. is the exact same way, right? You take the anecdotal incidents of crime and all these things, okay. and then you paint a whole country with a broad brush. Yeah. Uh, but second of all, when you have a country 
that is almost that that was led, uh, you know, by by uh, Dutch Dutch immigrants or you know who came and perpetrated one of the worst crimes in, of humanity hmm. and are still living in your country and you're telling me the Nigerians are the problem in your country? Give me a break. Cool. <laughs> so, so if you want to tackle people who are causing who are who, you know who are causing crime and all, if you're so staunch about that, why don't you start with the people who perpetrated one of the worst crimes of, against humanity who are right there in your country? Good point. You know, so don't, if you're willing to have a conversation with those people and give them the benefit of the doubt, don't turn around and, and antagonize the people who are fighting those same people on your behalf while yeah. allowing Americans and British and Germans, you know, who were dragging their feet and almost propping up the apartheid regime wow. for 30 years before, before be, you know, be, for 30 years you know, after the, the you know Nigerians and a lot of the other Africans came and were you know were were denouncing and, and divesting from the from the apartheid regime, those countries were still supporting the apartheid regime. So don't come and tell me that Nigerians are causing are bringing crime and drugs and rapists and all that stuff yeah, to your country. The yeah. real problem is sitting right there and staring you in the face, and you're willfully ignoring it. So, yeah, true. Please. You know, in this case, in this case, man, you can't say one bad apple spoils a whole bunch, and uh, <laughs> and then, you what know, what kind I, of policy is that? Yeah, and, and you know, I really don't think you know all all Nigerians should be impugned just for because of actions of a selective few. But you know what? And if we and if we are cri if we are criminals, then we don't want to come to your country. We'll keep our crime in our country. <laughs> right. Don't come to our country and advertise to us to come to your country. Right. Right. We'll, we'll keep our crime and our drugs and our rapists in our country. All yeah. right. True. So if we're so bad <laughs> that you have to that, we're, that you well, don't want to deal with us, then yeah. don't come. Don't come and advertise and tell us to come to your country because yeah. they're, they're over there using Nigerians as a face of South African tourism and tell us telling us to come to come to South Africa. You know, I, the, right. un, the United States isn't doing that. They, they've made it clear that, you know what, to the extent that we can keep Nigerians in Nigeria and have them not come to America, we'll do that. So yeah. if that's if that's the policy that the South African government wants to pursue, we are very, very we are willing to, to, to go down that road. Definitely. You know, I, I mean I know we're um we we're, we're pressed for time and I had a I this question didn't really come up, but what do you think about the thought that, you know, because our Nigerian government has messed up Nigeria so much and that's why people are just looking to go anywhere and South Africa is just one of the easiest places they could go. Well, I guess not according to your article, but what do you think about that? Because sorry, before you answer, um, you know, we had a, a video on Sahara Reporters where they saw people lining up to get like I think it was a uh, um, immigration out in South Africa, you know. Um, yeah, what do you think about that? Uh, that that uh, that our it's government the, is responsible yeah, because of the conditions for, for of which people, for people yeah. emigrating, for people wanting to leave Nigeria. So yeah. Bad. Now, yeah, here's what here's what I will say. That that is that is a valid argument. That mm -hmm. uh, you know the strife in Nigeria is is real. There are obviously too many of us for <laughs> for the pie. That is, you know, yeah, the, the standard you know, of living is not is, the greatest. Let's be honest. That is Nigeria. But here's what I will say, right? You are not going to keep going to countries, right? They're, they're, uh, Nigerians are not going to go to, to Libya because there's strife in Libya, right? Nigerians are not going to go to Iraq because, you know, because there's strife in Nigeria, right? Then they're going to places where they feel like they're, they're going to be granted opportunities. And I'm telling Nigerians that if you examine South Africa, that is mm. a country that does not want you there. Wow. There is no reason to continue going to a country and continue investing in a country's economy and continue propping up a country that has deliberately in their policies and every day and reinforced it. They still haven't responded to this article, which means they either, you know, are, are, are tone deaf or they don't care. They, right, they will. Uh, when we well, put this video uh, out, you know, they will. and so when they when you don't need to continue going there, a bunch of countries. And on the article, I put up a map of countries within Africa. You right. know, there's Kenya, there's Rwanda, there's Kenya, you, you know, there's Tanzania. There's a bunch of countries. There's Mauritius, wherever. Those are countries that want you there. There's Ghana. There's all these other countries yeah. that want you there. But you know, you know where they, they're not as you know they're not a, even countries that have visa restrictions for nigerians mm. there are a lot of countries that they, they have visa restrictions but even those restrictions are not arbitrarily 
you know, uh, uh, you know, difficult for Nigerians, and they're not specifically targeted right. to almost dissuade Nigerians from going there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so I, I don't think that I get. And, and my article again says, hey, if you don't have to be in South Africa. Don't go to South Africa. Do not go sure. there for leisure. Do not go there for if you have to go get surgery somewhere, you know, you know, or or go there for work or go there for a conference. Hey, by all means, go there. But yeah. anybody that is in a position to make that decision for themselves, I'm actively telling them: do not go there until this government shows a willful sort of uh, effort to yeah. almost earn your your because that's what it is. You know what I mean? We're not begging to go to South Africa. Yeah, I know. So we have to round up soon. But um, like I said, this article was in the Guardian, um, on Sahar Reporters, um, on Facebook. I shared it, and just I just we got back. I got back so many comments. Um, we'll talk about that later. But here's one, and um, you know, like I said, I think some people deem the uh, article rather pexnifian, which is one of my favorite words. I don't know what what does that mean. Pexnifian <laughs> means um hypocritical. Oh, hypocritical. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, know, you know, you know, I like why, words. Why is hypocritical? Oh, because they said, um, you know, Nigeria is worse when it comes to issues of visa tourism, especially, you know, there was a point where Nigerians had Ghana must go, even though I think it was the Ghanaians that started that first, but Nigerians had Ghana must go. And they said the difference between that was, I think when Ghana must go was, it was the government actually trying to push the Ghanaians away. No, Not, that was, that was a deliberate government policy. Yeah, but like, it wasn't actually the Nigerians. Wrong. Nigerians, we, and, you know, and you know what yeah, we did? So, yeah, wait, let, let, me, let me finish. Sorry. So, you know, with the Ghanaians, I thought they brought value when they were in Nigeria. I mean, I had lesson teachers growing up in Nigeria, this, this, and they were Ghanaian. You're about a policy that, that was from 40 years ago. If we, if we want to go back to 40 years okay. ago, South Africa, True. we can go there. Those are kind but, of archaic, yeah. They're antiquated, I agree. So, that, um, so what is the policy? How did we rectify that policy towards Ghanaians? We made a pact with all the ECOWAS countries True. where we have open borders, all any ECOWAS citizen can move freely within all 16 or 17 ECOWAS countries yeah. and, and pursue opportunities in business and trade and, you know, and, and whatever. We've right. rectified that problem. True. And you know why? It's because we see value, we see our shared value, you know, with the Ghanaian people. So, yeah. yes, we, we've made a bunch of wrong-headed, you know, policies. But, and, and to that point, that, that, that is another valid point that, that some people make, so I don't want to dismiss that point. The peck sniffing, peck sniffing, <laughs> word of the day, <laughs> yeah. right? which so, is that Nigeria, Nigeria reciprocates. Niger, get, coming to Nigeria is almost, the Nigerian immigration policy is almost as difficult. I will say this: yeah. one, yeah, Daniel, please difficult. hurry up because we have to round up. Uniformly, Nigerian immigration policy is uniformly difficult. We are not specifically targeting any country okay. and making life especially difficult for them. It is difficult for even Nigerians to get into Nigeria. Right. So we're not we're not specifically. So yes, there you know there there you know inadequacies in our in our government and in our immigration policies and whatnot. But they are uniform across all. They're not. They don't specifically target any government. And and for that matter. We know that Nigeria is not ready for tourism, so we're not out there, you know, advertising and telling people, oh, come to Nigeria, we love you, and all that stuff. Yeah. We're fixing the economy, we're fixing Nigeria, it's already saturated, and so, you know, but that hasn't stopped South Africans. I mean, there are businesses all over all over Nigeria, and maybe that becomes the next point of call is, is when we start boycotting, boycotting some of the some businesses, of the businesses that are yeah. in Nigeria, yeah. then they will, they will take that, that message to their government and say, okay, well, let's, let's, Let, down let's change this, things, you know? yeah. You know, we have to Put our uh, economic power into effect, but Don John, I, I only have thirty I seconds left. So I, to come to South Africa. Yeah, I have. To, I only have thirty seconds left, so we have to round up. So, last but not least, what do you hope to achieve with this article? Please, in ten seconds or less. <laughs> I, I want them to change their immigration policy towards Nigeria. Okay. I, I, I want an open border South Africa, or at least their policy, their South African home affairs, right. or South African missions policy should match. The South African tourism's policy, which is come to South Africa, I want them to start putting okay. actual policy actions to 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 their their big commercial advertising campaigns. Danjima, thank you so much. How can people get in touch with you? Oh, I'm on Instagram. I'm on you know Facebook, the Danjuma. Uh, just go and and most importantly, share that article yes. because we have the power to actually you know uh, uh, you know make them move. 
but we have to put numbers we have to put our numbers behind it and it's not normal it's not okay for you to be treated like shit at the south african embassy or at the vfs it is not okay yes uh this is a very poignant article uh i hope people share it and uh you know i thank you for speaking up um danjima please let me know when you're back in town man we'd like to have you in the studio live and not by skype thank you very much yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. All right, so, thank you. All right, man. All right, so there you have it, folks. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And please remember to subscribe to our Sahara YouTube channel where you can catch this show and other shows like Me and Ike Show, Keeping It Real with Adela, and Dr. Injakiri Damages. Until next time, folks. See you later. Bye.